the REI crowd is going to be out in full force for this one because of the thumbnail for this video. Just let me explain, okay? Watch to the end of the video because my last point is going to give some more context to my edgy ass thumbnail. And you're probably going to understand and even maybe agree. Although some of you won't just because you hate me, but that's okay. Today we're gonna talk about mistakes that beginner backpackers make when they're buying their gear. If you're just getting into backpacking, you wanna set yourself up for success. <laughs> and that starts with making some good choices when you're first buying your gear. All right, let's get into mistake number one. This would be not buying your gear in the right order. You might not have thought about this one. You might think, oh, if I'm going backpacking, I just have a checklist of items I need. I just need to buy all the items, throw them in a backpack, grab some weed, and then go out and have a good time in the woods. And for the most part, that's true, but there is one big exception to this rule. That is your backpack. I think that you should buy your backpack last when you're buying all of your gear. And here's why. First of all, if you buy your backpack first and then you buy all the rest of your gear and you didn't do a great job because you're a new backpacker and you're an idiot, you don't know what the you're doing. Next thing you know, you're trying to shove all your gear into your backpack and uh, guess what? Your dumbass bought a backpack. It's too small, dude. You really want to have an idea of how much gear you have and like how much volume it's going to take up before you buy your backpack so that way you can buy a backpack that you know is going to be the perfect fit for all that useless shit you're probably trying to carry. It can also go the other way. Let's say you buy your backpack first and Again, you're stupid. You buy a backpack that's just way too big. So now you've got all this space to fill up in your backpack. And so when you're buying the rest of your gear, you're thinking, I'm just gonna buy like a bunch of big things and a bunch of extra things, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, just so that you can fill up the space in the backpack you bought because it's too big. You wanna get all your other gear first and then finally buy the backpack that's going to fit all of that gear perfectly. Mistake number two. You don't wanna to buy too much gear either. And this is a super, super common mistake that beginner backpackers make all the time, dude. And honestly, I'm not hating on this one because I did it. Literally everybody does it. You don't know what you need to do yet. You're new to backpacking, like it, it totally makes sense. So I'm not saying you're stupid. I'm just saying you're a moron. You don't wanna to buy too much gear. And I can't go through every single gear item right now and tell you exactly what you need to buy and exactly what not to buy. All I'm saying is, you just want to keep this in mind when you're buying your gear. Don't go overboard. You're still going to make some mistakes. You're probably still going to buy some gear items that you don't need. And maybe you'll even forget to buy a few gear items that you do need. But just be weary of like all the extra bells and whistles. And I literally mean bells and whistles. Like don't buy bear bells. Have you guys seen that shit? This is like the most ridiculous thing. It's like a bell that you carry on your backpack so it like keeps bears. It's just, there's lots of other little gimmicky backpacking products, little tools and knives and cooking utensils, just like all this random stuff. This might be obvious. And in fact, there's a good chance you're already doing this. If you want to get a better idea of what you do and don't need, definitely watch some gear list videos that experienced backpackers have put on YouTube. I've got mine for my PCT through hike right here. And again, you're not, I'm not saying, and I'm not saying, you gotta follow these lists like to the dot, but just to get a better idea of what's necessary and what's not. Mistake number three, and man, this is a tragic one. Don't buy gear unless it's specific to backpacking. And again, for some of you that might sound obvious, but believe it or not, if you're new to backpacking and you don't really know what you're doing, maybe you've gone on a few camping trips before, but you've never gone backpacking, you might think, oh, well, I have a camping tent, like I'll just I'll just bring my camping tent. And you don't wanna bring that camping tent, it sucks dick. It might be fine for driving to a campsite, starting a fire, listening to your friend play shitty songs on the guitar and getting hammered all night, but it's not gonna work for backpacking. Tents that are designed specifically for backpacking are designed to be lightweight and they're designed to pack well inside of a small backpack. The same thing can be said about sleeping bags. They obviously make lightweight sleeping bags that are meant for backpacking. They're compressible, they pack well, they're designed to give you a good warmth to weight ratio. You really want a sleeping bag or a quilt that's made specifically for backpacking if you're gonna go backpacking. Don't just take whatever piece of your grandma gave you for Christmas like five years ago. It's like this big. It's one of the ones you just like roll up and it has a couple straps. Like don't take that. That thing sucks. It's not warm. It probably smells like cigarettes anyways because your grandma gave it to you. Or what about your stove? We've all seen that like green Coleman or whatever the f stove that people take car camping. You might think like, oh, that's a camping stove. I'll strap that sucker onto the back of my backpack. Next thing you know, you're going uphill and you have a heart attack. And it's not because you eat at McDonald's six times a week. It's because you're 
carrying way too much weight because you got this stupid stove attached to your back. You, you don't want to do that. Get an actual backpacking stove. Get backpacking specific gear for everything that you're carrying. But, 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 this next mistake, number four, is you don't want to spend too much money on your backpacking gear either. You don't have to buy the most expensive stuff. So while you should certainly buy backpacking specific gear, don't go out and think that just because an item is like really expensive or like the most expensive item, that doesn't mean it's the best item. What you should really do is research the items that you need, find out what some of the more expensive, maybe high-end items are, and then also see if there's any budget alternatives that you can buy instead because and I've said this before in other videos literally the last thing I want to happen is to have a new backpacker a beginner backpacker go out there you know get really excited about it because they watched all my videos and they're like oh this Kyle guy he's so cool spend a ton of money on like really expensive high-end backpacking gear take it out for their very first backpacking trip and find out that well they can't in the woods they hate dirt you know they don't care about trees and they hate backpacking that would be terrible so definitely if you're a beginner backpacker again you need to have stuff that's going to keep you safe and stuff that actually makes sense to take backpacking but you don't need the most expensive stuff you don't need the lightest stuff you don't need the best stuff really try to strike a balance between buying gear that's going to work for you but also not spending too much money and then once you use this beginner gear on a few trips you find out you actually do really like trees and you really like dirt and you can sh all day in the woods no problems at all at that point maybe go out and you know sell a kidney or something and buy some really expensive ultra light gear okay mistake number five are you ready to finally talk about that thumbnail the elephant in the room here what do you think mistake number five that new backpackers make is thinking they have to buy all their gear from well-known outfitters like REI. Before you start typing, you've already been typing this whole time, honestly, but I'm not saying that REI is terrible and you shouldn't buy anything from REI. I actually like REI quite a bit, as much as I shit on them in my thumbnails. I like a lot of the deals they give members. Obviously, they have a great selection of certain items like trail runners, backpacking food, and then of course, Miranda in the Wild is just the best hiking YouTuber, let's, let's be honest. But with that said, I think that a lot of people who don't know much about backpacking think of REI as like the starting point for backpacking gear. And I'm here to tell you that there is so much more out there that you can't even find in stores in person. Definitely still go to REI and get a few things, maybe take a few photos, tag Miranda, do what you gotta do. But don't buy all of your gear there, okay? Go home and start looking up what are called cottage companies. There's a whole host of small, backpacking gear companies that make high quality, customizable, and just fun backpacking gear. And you're not gonna find any of these companies in freaking REI or at Eastern Mountain Sports, Big Five, whatever the hell the outfitters, you know what I'm saying. A lot of these companies specialize in ultra light gear as well, so it might have given you the added benefits of shaving some weight off of your backpacking gear. Now, one thing I will say, which kind of goes back to my previous point, some of, if not a lot of these cottage companies can be a little bit on the more expensive side, but I know someone's gonna comment that. First of all, Outfitters like REI, for instance, also have a lot of very expensive gear. And so there's certainly some gear items that you buy from cottage vendors that are like on the more expensive side, but there's also a lot of items that cottage vendors make that are basically the same price as something you're gonna find at REI. So basically what I'm saying is don't think you have to buy all your gear at REI. And also don't think you have to buy all your gear at these tiny cottage vendors either. Survey what your options are. The reason I'm making this point because I feel like a lot of new backpackers don't even know about these small cottage companies. Here's some of my favorite cottage vendors and these are in no particular order. I really like ULA Equipment. They make really cool backpacks. There's a company called Hammock Gear and they make top quilts and like sleeping bag basically things for backpacking. They also make under quilts. They make tarps. Do they make hammocks too? I don't even know. I guess it's called hammock gear. Let's see. Who would have guessed? It turns out they also, uh, they, they do make hammocks and I am blurry as shit. There's so many of them. Enlightened Equipment is another one that makes like hammock stuff. I've never used their gear, but I know they're really popular. Of course, there's Z-Packs, Gossamer Gear. I don't know. Um, there's, there's way more than that even. Just do some research, see what your options are, and subscribe to the channel, bitches!